Welcome, friends, to our very first level episode, which means, boys, you're hit level two. Yeah. It was looking spotty for a bit. (laughs) (laughs) I know. It's exciting for me. It's a weird time to level up, I know, because you did just crash into a planet. (laughs) Um, But, alas, here we are. Um, I think surviving a you know, a, a cataclysmic event like that is enough experience to to boost you up a level. So for those of you who don't know what this is, and why would you, because this is our first one, our level episodes will be a crunch-oriented, character creation-oriented thing. So if you're interested in just the story and just the narrative, you don't have to listen to this. You can skip this and you will not miss anything. We will keep this completely narrative-free and character development-free outside of the actual crunch and numbers of character creation. Uh, but these will be kind of short. So if you're not ultra like disgusted by it, maybe give it a listen. It'll only be a few minutes. Yes, we're keeping these very brief. Um, and on that note, we're going to start. I'm going to start with the list that I have in front of me. Uh, Niall, tell me what Cody gets at level two. So Cody gets a combat feat at level two. Um, And it's funny, like, you know, there's a few stat increases, nothing dramatic. It's funny that soldier doesn't get any reflex save until level three. You imagine it would be like, will save would be the dump one, right? Yeah. But no, my reflex save up until level three is going to be plus zero from my class. So probably shouldn't tell you that, but there you go. Um, Noting it down. (laughs) Throw you off a car next time. I become better at punching, and uh, basically, I get a combat feat. What feat are you taking? Now, this was very hard for me, because I feel like there were some really good ones. Like, there's one where when I'm punching someone, everyone else gets a plus one to shoot the person I'm punching, and like, you know, with Durin in the back fucking sniping, that would be great. But I wasn't sure how, I don't know. And then there were a few other ones, but I, I... Kind of went, I guess, maybe boring. I went with improved uh, combat maneuver disarm. Okay. Because I feel like it, it, one, it leads up to a very fun feat later on that I can't wait to take. But two, it just works for Cody and his, like, combat-oriented, like, bouncer style, you know? Yeah. So I figured I figured it'll be fun. So I got improved combat maneuver disarm. So for those that don't know, it's a plus four to the disarm maneuver. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Dern, what, uh, what's... Or sorry, Terry, what's Durin getting these? <laughs> it's this okay. Level? I try to embrace my character when we play as much as possible. Yeah. Um, well, the important thing is evasion, of course. Like any, any good rogue class needs some evasion, which uh, means, you know, no damage from successful or from successful reflex, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, of course, I get my operative exploit this time around. And it took me a while and I was going through the whole list and there was one that just kept, you know, just... It kept bringing me back. So the one that uh, that spoke to me was a holographic clone. What? Which means I can like create a holographic holographic duplicate of myself. It, it's like a psychic projection, and pretty much it's mirror image. That's oh cool. shit! And I can do it once per day, and it lasts a minute. And I have one d four images, and so you're Damn. basically mirage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just like, I saw that. I was like, fuck, a free mirror image every day. Hell yeah, I can't not do that. Now That's I've got to cool. throw all my attacks at you. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see, I'm a little squishier than everyone else, so I figured it was like, all right, let's 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 lower those percentages to hit as much as possible. Yeah, I did almost kill you quite a few times last episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I was at 2 HP at my lowest point, and I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Perfect, and final, last but not least, uh, Ryan, what is, what's Merrick getting? Uh, Merrick finally gets to go full Jedi. I'm taking in, I get a stellar re- revelation, my first non given stellar revelation. Everything else is pretty standard, but what I get to do is take gravity hold, which just allows me to move items at will with my mind. Cool. Oh, damn. And then, as when I'm attuned, it's a graviton um, stellar revelation. So, next time I pick one, I have to pick a photon revelation. But when I'm attuned or fully attuned, I can use it to hold people. Fuck. Nice. Yeah. So, so yeah. Is that so, how so. Solarians work? Is like when you take a graviton, you have to take a photon next? Yeah, I need to. Yeah, for revelations, you can't be more than one ahead. <laughs> so oh, you can only I guess have that makes one sense. More. Yeah, it's all like Solarians are all about ba- balance. Yeah, and the like the two revelations I have before, uh, they're Zenith revelations, which means to use them, I have to 
have three photon or graviton points and then blow them all to do that ability. But with mm-hmm. the normal stellars, it's stuff I can do all the time. Cool. Yeah. Is there like uh, limitations on on a kind of like Mage Hand where you can't do magic items and you can't like do stuff over five pounds? Kind of like at yeah, its I level can't do one? anything complex. Like I can't mm-hmm. use a computer or shoot a gun, but I can like open doors and it works like a like a Starfinder spell called Psychokinetic Hand. Yeah, it's a it's a cantrip, but it's yeah. um, but once again, when I'm attuned, it gets a little bit more powerful. That's awesome. Well, boys, I'm very excited to see what you do with your newfound abilities. We will see you in the next episode of No Quest for the Wicked. Thanks, guys.